and welcome to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. We are broadcasting from beautiful Colby, Kansas tonight. I'm trying to get my levels set. Uh, we're doing a little something different. I'm excited to be doing something a little different. Uh, this is a broadcast uh, from my hotel room, of all things, right here in uh, beautiful Colby, Kansas. Colby, Kansas is about roughly 225 miles, call it 230 miles uh, east of the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. And um, I was, we've been on the road for um, a little under a week now uh, with my band, Dot Cero. And the last few days I've been uh, doing things really in, in uh, conjunction with uh, some of the, the work I've been trying to do with uh, uh, recovery ministries and also uh, outreach uh, in the Christian community as well. So I'd like to welcome you to Conscious Conversations on June 11th, Sunday night, June 11th. Uh, 2017. It is. Uh, it is. Uh, it is also. It's. It's a. It's a night that uh, I've got um, our, our leader uh, Henry Archuleta um, with KUHS Denver back in the studio. Here's how we're going to do this tonight. It's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to call into the studio to do our radio portion of the uh, broadcast. I'll call into the studio in about 20 minutes and have a conversation with Henry. I'm going to tell him a little bit about uh, what's been going on uh, out here on the road. It's been a great road trip. Uh, I'm going to try to do things like show you, uh, you know, give you a, an overview of, of what the road has been like for Dotsero uh, this last week. It's been a great trip. And uh, I appreciate Henry Archuleta. Uh, coming into the studio and sitting in to the studio doing um, the work for us, uh, doing the work for us uh, to to get the broadcast up and running, the music portion of it, the audio portion of it, which is rolling right now, and then we'll uh, we'll check in every twenty minutes and and do a radio segment. So those who are listening on the radio will get benefit of what we're talking about. I want to talk about four things uh, uh, on on the uh, agenda tonight. Uh, we first we we played uh, we played at Bradley Fair, which is a shopping district um, akin to uh, one of the bigger shopping districts, maybe in Colorado. I would say uh, Park Meadows uh, Mall. It's akin to uh, maybe Southlands or the uh, Flatirons or um, the Orchard Town Center, and they have a huge jazz concert series every single year. And they, you know, they have experimented with doing other forms of, of music other than contemporary jazz, but they've had really good luck um, with people really enjoying the uh, contemporary jazz. We've had the opportunity of being able to do this show. I'm I'm gonna I'm going out on a limb and say that we've done it. This was our fourth time. Uh, the year before we did it, it well the it was the last time was 2012 where we did the Fourth uh, of July celebration. I always ended off with uh, every Thursday in every Thursday in uh, in June, and then they. They ended off with a big 4th of July. They've got one of the biggest uh, fireworks, best fireworks uh, displays, bar none, in the entire country. And they save up for this throughout the community. And they put on, I mean, and it lasts, you know, how fireworks will last sometimes for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and, you know, 20 minutes if, if it's a if it's like you know, over the top great but uh, this one lasts uh, way over a half hour and it's orchestrated 
uh, with music from the radio station, which they do here too. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a special, special show. We had a great time, and it's been uh, an unbelievable uh, time on the road. There was a lot of things uh, that I wanted to accomplish on this road trip, and I feel like uh, I've, I've been able to get those done, and that's a great feeling. That's just a great feeling. Uh, coming up on, uh, this is kind of towards the end of our, our road trip, uh, the rest of Dotsero went home uh, from Kansas City on Saturday, and then we're going to kind of end up our tour uh, in Longmont for Prospect uh, Soundbites series. It's one of my favorite concert series of the entire summer um, in the uh, Colorado area. Prospect is, is a little um, formed community which is just south of Longmont. And it is one of those communities that's kind of uh, nestled in and kind of hidden or hidden a little bit, but it's got everything right there. And it's got one of the coolest uh, little amphitheater parks where they have concerts every Monday night. And that's a great thing because everybody seems to have their concert series like later towards the end of the week. And it's so cool that there's a concert series on Monday. Kind of a great way to, to start off your week. Uh, so we've got a lot to do tonight and, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, uh, road tired, but you know what? I'm, I'm not, I feel good. I feel great. And I feel like we've gotten a lot accomplished. And so with those two, well, I didn't mention the second concert. The second concert was a big festival in the Kansas city area, Overland Park, which is, uh, on the, the Western side of, uh, of Kansas City, the Kansas side of Kansas City. They have a big uh, a big downtown area called the Corporate Woods. And the Corporate Woods is, is uh, where this, uh, the, the corporate buildings are. And so they, they call this festival that they do each year, which is one of their largest, if not their largest, open air uh, concerts um, for the entire year. Um, it's it's called Jazz in the Woods, and they mean Jazz in the Corporate Woods. And there's this year some of the some of the artists. Just to give you an example, uh, Dotsero, my band kicked it off on Friday night. We drove from Wichita Friday and got in there and got our sound check done and had a great time. Uh, and I got to tell you some other cool things about what happened for us. Um, we got our picture in Kansas City's, um, this is not the easiest thing to do, but I'll figure this out, how to get this. You can see uh, the photos here. Uh, got our picture in Kansas City Magazine, it's called 435, and it's right beside all their summer events. It'd be like, be like uh, Denver Magazine or, or 5284 for Denver right in the midst of, of all the things for to do for the whole summer long. There's a picture of the elders, which who also played the uh, Jazz in the wood, Woods. And then there's also a picture of Fish and their big Starlight uh, Amphitheater, which is akin, I guess, akin to Red Rocks for, for the community here in uh, Kansas City. Uh, so... Uh, it, it's just been a great trip. Those two concerts kicked it off for us. And then I had the opportunity to visit Valley Hope, Moundridge, which is a very uh, uh, charming town uh, in Kansas, about, about 35 to 40 miles um, north of Wichita on your way to Salina. So it's between Salina and Wichita. And I visited Valley Hope. Moundridge and got to do um, a little mini concert to tracks uh, where I played uh, four or five songs for them and we talked about it, it's a uh, it's a recovery center and talked about early sobriety and what it's like you know and how to you know how the thing I wanted to really emphasize for these the people at, at this wonderful facility was 
is that it says in, in our literature, the best years of your life lie ahead of you. Uh, all you have to do is embrace the program, embrace the 12 steps, and make them practice these principles in all of your affairs. That's part of what, what our 12 steps says, is practice these principles in all your affairs. Then your, your, best, your best years lie ahead of you. And, I, and this, is for not, this is for any kind of addiction. This, this is for, but mainly uh, at Valley Hope, they deal with um, drugs and alcohol addictions. They're, of course, many people are, are, are uh, fighting uh, you know, the heroin, the meth, amphetamine, the, the, um, also the, uh, the opiates and, uh, and, and pain pills, um, oxycodone, and, and many of these other uh, habit-forming, addiction, uh, addicting drugs that uh, are ruining people's lives. And so I got to uh, do a talk with them, meet a lot of them, and, and get to know them. And it, and it brought back, it brought back memories of when I was in the recovery center, uh, West Pines, uh, for four days, I did my medical detox there, and I'm so grateful that my wife knew that I needed a uh, medical detox, and it was it was it was special. It it was good because you know I got to know people there and. People that are in the same situation, people who are broken, people who are somewhat lost, confused, um, trying to figure out how to make this all-important change in our lives that it, that will definitely um, impact the rest of our lives daily, especially if we're able to live sober, and not just live sober, but be happy sober. We always... We talk about being happy, joyous, and free. And that's what I am. And it's I, I truly am. I can I've got so much to be thankful for, so much gratitude in my heart, especially for my sobriety, um, but also for my personal relationship with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, for all the great things that are happening with Live at Jack's, the music venue, with uh Dotsero and touring and and with the new CD that we just released. We just released uh, Dotsero Retro 2017. This is our 15th CD. So in, there's just so much to be thankful for. After we did the the mini uh, the short talk and the concert, I played for about four or five songs for him. I'm going to play a little bit of that for you. I'm going to at least try to do that. Um, with my, uh, try to do that with, with my, uh, iPhone in, in a little bit here, but, uh, and if that doesn't work, we'll, we'll bail on that. But, uh, after that, I went to a, a recovery meeting, uh, in the same little town of Moundridge and, uh, it was a great meeting. It was a, a meeting where, um, alcoholics and, um, uh, drug addicts and, um, people from the uh, Valley Hope, as well as other people from the community, uh, two guys brought the meeting up from uh, Wichita. It was a great meeting. And then we ended the night off um, in Valley Hope at Moundridge in their chapel. And they have, uh, they have one of the most uh, wonderful chapels. And that we ended the night with prayer. And we ended the night in, with our arms around each other in, in unity and uh, recovery and service and talking about how we can help each other uh, get sober, stay sober, grow spiritually, find a higher power of our understanding. In my case, finding and re-running towards my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was running towards me with open arms. I'm going to be calling in to, uh, to Henry uh, here 
in about uh, five minutes. We're going to talk uh, about uh, a couple of the concerts for about 10 minutes and uh, talk about uh, what's coming up. But I wanted to do this show tonight in, in the worst way because I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I think it's important to be able to do your show and, and to have it have it click and do well from the studio where you're comfortable and you're used to the surroundings and all, all the uh, gear that you, you have at your disposal. But I also think you have to step out of your comfort zone. Part of, part of one of the best parts of sobriety for me has been being able to let go of the fear of many things and step out in, in, out of your comfort, comfort zone. And I found that in every single situation, uh, even the ones, the, the one or two situations that didn't go like I wanted it to, or I would, or it would be easy to say, well, that was obviously a disaster, <laughs> you know, um, even that it's like, it's like guy came up to me the other night at the uh, Jazz in the Woods concert and we got to talking about spirituality. We got to talking about uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and, and our relationship with God and, and, and Jesus and being saved and reading the living word of God. And he, he came up to me and he asked me, he said, he said, Steve, what is your what is your go-to Bible verse? What is your one Bible verse that you just always go to for for strength and hope and comfort? You know, and I thought about it for a second and and I didn't have to think about it that long. I thought I would, you know, one of the things I like to do is I like to uh, memorize as many Bible verses as I can. It's just something that I enjoy. But when I thought about it for just a second, it was really funny because I, I stepped aside uh, and I told the people at, at, uh, at uh, Grace Crossing Church this morning where I got the, uh, a chance to speak. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, it hit me just on the side of the head. There was no question. It was like It was like the Lord was giving it to me. Oh, you know what that Bible verse is. Steve, you know what it is, and here it is. It is First Thessalonians five sixteen through eighteen. Scripture, and here's what it says: Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Many times people ask, well, I don't know what the will of God is for me. You know, uh, what what is that? How do I find that out? I mean, we can't, he doesn't, some, I mean, maybe he does speak to some people. Um, some, but, but the majority of people say, well, he doesn't speak to me. He, so, um. So how do I know the will of God? Well, it's right there in the living word of, of God in his scripture where he said, this is the will of God for you in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we've, we're, we're getting towards that time where uh, I'm going to be calling into Henry and we're going to be talking about uh, this, this tour that we're on that we're concluding up tomorrow night at at, uh, at, uh, at at Prospect Sound Bites concert series. Very excited about this. We're doing it earlier this year than normal, and it looks like we're going to have beautiful weather uh, for this um, for this concert. I'm knocking on wood uh, because I really love this concert series. A lot of people come out. It's a great family event, and it's something that we're going to uh, cherish. It's a great way to cap off um, a wonderful week of not only uh, concerts for Dot Zero, but uh, service in uh, to to sobriety. And I'm going to give uh, 
Henry a call right now. So here we go. See see what I see how this 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 works. Calling. It's ringing. It's ringing right now. See if he picks up. Third ring. May have to try again. Third ring. Fourth ring. So we'll have to try that again. I'm trying to reach it. I may have to. I may have to call him on our backup line. We do have a backup plan uh, for it, for these these calls. So see if we can. So I'm calling on our backup number. We'll see if we can reach Henry at, on that number and go from there. No, I'm not. I, I, uh, I, no, nobody's, no, nobody's answering. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're we're getting it hooked up here. So are you on are your is your mic up, Henry? I'm here, Henry. Thanks for uh for getting me on. Whoop we'll, um well, I guess we'll have to figure out how that, uh, how to get the, um, the other line working on the next segment. Yeah. So, well, I'll just let it, I'll just let it ring. The problem is, is that it, after four, after four rings, um, it, it gets, it, 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 it bails on me and goes to the, uh, the message. But, um, so anyway, uh, I appreciate you sitting in uh, in the studio tonight, and uh, 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 it's a late night for you <laughs> at the studio, but I appreciate you uh, um, sitting in and, and, and producing for me tonight in, in, while I'm here in Colby, Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, uh, I was I was gonna have you. Uh, I was gonna talk to you and tell you a little bit about the uh, the uh, concerts that we did, and uh, kind of go go from the the idea of well, we left last Wednesday, and it was Wednesday the seventh. Of, uh, of June we we were we drove we decided to drive on this uh, on this tour because we just had a, a, a few things that you know we, we wanted to bring some of our own gear and we were we were going to be uh, going directly from Wichita to Kansas City so I wanted to let people know that we were we played at uh, Bradley Fair uh, concert series which is is a uh, an excellent 
uh, concert series in uh, Wichita. Bradley Fair is a shopping district uh, that is very similar, uh, I would say, similar to um, Park Meadows, um, Park Meadows Mall. This is the picture that was in that. Um, this is a. We've had some great publicity uh, on this this tour, uh, but this this was at a uh, a mall that is very similar to Orchard Town Center, um, Park Meadows Mall. Um, you know the uh, the 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 new outdoor mall up in Boulder, and yet it's set on this. It's set on a lake, and the lake is. Uh, in the background where the stage is. So people, um, some of the people that don't want to be in right where the concert is, will, will they'll line up chairs all the way around the lake. And uh, the, the sound covers will, cr will, will cross the water and uh, so people can enjoy the sound across the water. But the, but the sound right where the concert is is, um, is excellent. They've had this... Uh, this concert series for about oh I want to say oh close to 20 years and uh, they've been doing uh, contemporary jazz smooth jazz and have had uh, a lot of great artists uh, uh, artists like uh, uh, Marcus Anderson um, Brian Simpson um, this year's lineup is 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 great they've got uh, they, of course, we we played we kicked we kicked it off this year. No, we didn't. We're second. Uh, Joseph Vincelli uh, was first. He always plays. He's a uh, a regional saxophone player that lives close to Wichita area. And then uh, they've they've got uh, coming up. They've got uh, uh, Chris Standring, and also um, a few. Uh, they call the JT Project. Um, Coming up, and then uh, Vincent Ngala uh, is going to uh, is going to go ahead and uh, finish off the series. But it's been it was a great it was a wonderful night. It's funny because the last few last few days here, uh, days in which the band did not play, the rest the band headed home after the second concert. I'll tell you about. Um, late Saturday, but we, and they're going to meet up with me again on Monday for Prospect uh, Soundbite Series, which is a, uh, a series that I'm, that I love doing. It's one of the best concert series in Colorado during the year because it's on a Monday. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's not competing with anything else. Um, and it's a great way to kick off your week. So it's up, it's just south of uh, Longmont on and it's just west of Highway 287 which is uh, cuts off of um, the Boulder Turnpike um, it's basically Wadsworth at that point and then heads north um, through Erie and, and uh, Lafayette and uh, many many other towns but it uh, it's just west of 287 and it's I want to say it's like six to eight you can go to uh, go to dotzeroband.com to find out how to uh, get there, and it is free and open to the public. They claim that it's the largest gathering of food trucks uh, in the in the entire summer. So everybody seems to claim that, but there's a lot of food trucks there, and they're all very good. So yeah, for sh yeah, for sure. So we had a great time. Uh, we had an, uh, uh, a crowd. Oh, I you know it's hard to it's hard to gauge how many how many people were out there. I would say close to two thousand were out there in at uh, Bradley Fair concert series, and and it was fun because we we got to uh, um, we got to sell a lot of the new CD, um, uh, the Dotsera Retro twenty seventeen, and um, provide that for people out in the area, and and it, they. Also, the Telltale CD that uh, we is is new for these folks, unless they got it uh, over the internet and or through Amazon CD Baby and so forth. But uh, left the next day uh, to go to uh, to Kansas City, 
for the Jazz in the Woods, uh, Jazz in the Woods show. This is a, a big festival. Um, this is one of this is uh, one of Kansas City's, if not their largest, it is their largest um, open air uh, outdoor festival, and it's uh, free to the public. I mean, it's it's amazing that the amount of talent that they get out there for this and it's free to the public. And uh, so that's very, that's that's an exciting uh, thing for them. They do, the Rotary Club uh, of South, um, South, uh, oh, I should have had this. It's the Overland Park South Rotary Club that puts on this event every year. And they ask for a donation. Uh, they ask for a donation of, uh, you know, $5 for people to come in and, they the lineup this year for uh, Jazz in the Woods was 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 unbelievable. Uh, Dot Zero, we we opened it. They had a, a gal um, that I had not heard before. Her name is Kelly Hunt, and she was uh, just fantastic. Very very uh, uh, Bonnie Raitt um, in in sound. She has a kind of one of those uh, uh, pop bluesy voices that. Uh, and her songs just have that that kind of bluesy, uh, almost Cajunish uh, sound to it. So not necessarily jazz, but but it was. But, but there's many elements of jazz to that. And then there's a group that headlined on on Friday night called the uh, the Elders, and the Elders are very very popular. Uh, they're a group that is almost Celtic in in nature. Um, it says, and then we're, I'll probably um, uh, pick up on the next 10-minute segment after that, uh, Henry. The, the elders were founded in 1998 uh, by six individuals with a passion for music rooted in Americana and Celtic folk rock. From the beginning, the elders seem to be channeling something ancient and enduring, something unaffected by fads, trends, and the giant maw of mind-numbing commercialism. <laughs> there. What's that? No, this this was uh, this was this will be our fourth time at Jazz in the Woods. So, it, kind of kind of ironic that we we caught up to both our fourth time at Jazz in the Woods and our fourth time uh, at. Uh, at uh, Wichita, the the great thing about it was this time was is to is to do them back to back, and, uh, and to have the opportunity to you know to do consecutive nights in a row um, at big festivals is uh, is kind of a great thing for a band. It, you kind of get the get the feel of of, of a uh, tour atmosphere, and and it's it's a lot of fun. So, so I think what I'll do is ha let you. Uh, spin a few tunes, um, Mr. Archuleta, and I will give you a call back in about 20 minutes. Now, what, uh, what number do you want me to call you on, Henry? Want me to try the studio line again? That's, well, that works too. That sounds great. Oh. And there we go. There was our first there was our first radio segment. And I wanted to uh, uh, get a a devotion in um, for that radio segment, but maybe we'll save it um, for the next one. We did uh, we did finish Oh, I did. I didn't finish telling you. I wanted to kind of go on, go on from there. Tell you about uh, what happened this today. To finish, I spent the night before last um, and ended up the night in chapel, which was something that was very special. And I, I already told you about that. But I had been one of my guests uh, on May seventeenth. Uh, 2017 was it was a guest that I had on the show in studio 
His name was uh, Mike Grover. And uh, Mike Grover was a, was a kind of a, a, a great get for me because I didn't have a guest lined up and I was kind of just kind of thinking, well, well, maybe I'll do a solo show or maybe somebody will come through. And I always have my feelers out there and I know which guests that I'd really like to have on and which guests that I'm targeting to have on Conscious Conversations. But I, uh, through my friend who was also a guest on the show uh, earlier this year, Miss um, Terry Craig, she was uh, con gracious enough to, uh, she had been at a recovery meeting, um, in a, uh, an NA recovery uh, meeting, and with a person who works with Parker Valley Hope. The Valley Hope uh, Recovery Centers um, that started in Kansas, in, in Moundridge and other places in Kansas, they came to Colorado. So Parker Valley Hope is a, is a re, um, recovery center uh, facility here in, in Parker. And uh, matter of fact, I, I have some really dear friends who uh, were in that program and gained so much knowledge and, and uh, gained a great footing and a foundation to start uh, their life of, of recovery uh, from addiction uh, from Parker Valley Hope. Anyway, uh, Mr. Mike Grover had, uh, after being a guest, I found out that he lived uh, in Mount, not Moundridge, but in Heston, which is about 30, oh, no, it's about 12 miles uh, south of Moundridge. But he works at the Valley Hope Center in Moundridge. And he was going to come out and see us play at Wichita. And I was trying to figure out a way that I could visit and see the center and possibly, you know, get a chance to uh, do basically what I got the opportunity to do. But he came back, he came back and, and said, well, let's, let's see, uh, let's see what, what we can do about getting you in a church, the church that's in Moundridge. Well, the name of the church is uh, Grace Crossing Church. I've got, um, they gave me this cool, this, uh, this, I'll get it. Grace Crossing Church. And they gave me that this that great that great wristband, and we we and I got a chance to be the speaker this this morning, uh, and I, to talk. I wanted to tell to to tell my story, uh, to witness to uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but also to to tell my story about recovery and how uh, God and Jesus has helped me not only recover, but uh, stay sober. And I just wanted to let you know that I just got, uh, I just got a, a, a text uh, from, let's see, where was, it? I, gotta, I gotta see this. Um, Okay, what I got was uh, I, I got a I got a text message, and I've got I want to share it. Uh, this is cool, and I know who this is from, and I'm hoping he will hope he's listening, and he, hope he'll join in, because this is the first time I've actually caught him. Uh, it figures when I'm when I'm <laughs> when I'm in the studio and I've got all that technology. Sometimes I got too many things going because if I've got Facebook Live going, but I'm I'm gonna Perry if you. Uh, Pastor Perry, if you are if, if you are watching and listening, um, greetings from uh, Colby, Kansas. It's so great to hear from you. Uh, thank you for texting me. Um, I'm going to text. You know what? Text you, you. I'll just talk and you text back and I'll share what you have to say. Uh, share. Let me let me know what you think about. What would your 
What would your go-to uh, Bible verse be, uh, Perry? This is my friend Perry Brugett, who's going to be a guest on my show coming up here in the near future. He currently lives in uh, Minnesota, and he's been a, a friend of mine for years and uh, a dear friend of mine. Uh, we are definitely kindred spirits and uh, brothers in, in, in Jesus Christ. And, and uh, so I appreciate his input and his, uh, his text and participation in the show tonight. If you're, if you're, if you're hearing, uh, if you're watching and hearing Perry, the question is, I had a guy come up and say, what is your go-to? What is your go-to Bible verse? That, that you just, it's without thinking, you go to it. And I, and, I, and I shared that mine would be 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, 6, 16 through 18. Uh, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in all things give thanks. For this is the will of, our Lord, of, of, the, of God in our, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, that's one, and one that I want to, that I would come up with as a, as a close second, or just right right in succession, would be uh, one of those would would be uh, Psalm thirty one verse fourteen. Uh, but I trust in you, O Lord. I say, Thou art my God. My times are in Thy hands. And that is a a way of we could paraphrase that in into the recovery community by saying, let go, let God. That's, it's one of those things that is just not that easy to do. I mean, we, we give it lip service. We talk about, we talk about it. And, uh, but it, it's something that is, 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 once you do have that kind of trust, in, in your heavenly Father, then you've built a faith that can move mountains, and I'm convinced of it. Well, let's see. Guess what? I got another reply from, from Perry, and I'm going to share it uh, right here on the air, right here, right now, as, uh, as I'm in Colby, Kansas tonight in my hotel room, and uh, going to be heading all the way back to Longmont tomorrow for one more show uh, before I'm going to uh, shut it down after that show tomorrow night. Perry Brugett, my friend, says, If I remember right, you are sitting in a hotel room in the Midwest. You have been very heavy on my heart recently. I think, I thank God, I thank God for your friendship and your ministry, letting the world know that the true answer in life is Jesus Christ. You are such a blessing, and conscious conversations are touching thousands globally. May the Holy Spirit continue to bless you as he works through you. Thank you for your true friendship and a precious, and a precious brother in the Lord. I can hardly wait to come be in Colorado and be a guest on your show. Well, Perry, that is... Uh, that is something that we've got planned. We're gonna, we're going to have you be a guest on. I, I'm, I'm, I, I prefer to have you in studio. That's why I'm kind of holding out. Um, hope to get you on, on in, in studio so we can get the cameras on you and we can have uh, a conversation, a two-way conversation like we normally do. You know, uh, over pancakes. You know, <laughs> maybe we'll bring. Uh, some pancakes, or we could do the show live from from IHOP and and have our conversation while we're having coffee and pancakes. We uh, seem to do well uh, when we're talking about the Lord and enjoying uh, his his abundant uh, grace and gifts of of good things like like pancakes, right? <laughs> Perry Brugett, um, my brother in Christ, and uh, a a true true, uh, pure heart in soul uh, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your participation, Perry. It means a lot to me, especially tonight uh, on a night 
where we're, like I say, we're stepping out of our comfort zone a little bit and talking about, uh, well, we're, 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 we're doing a show in, in kind of piecemeal here. We're doing a little bit of a show uh, about, we're, we're, we're interjecting the tour that, that Dot Sarah is on and that I'm finishing up. Uh, it's been twofold uh, with, with concerts, big, big jazz festivals that we've been fortunate enough um, and I'm so grateful to have been invited to. And then also uh, having been invited to to serve and to witness at both uh, Valley Hope Moundridge Recovery F Facility and also uh, at, at uh, Grace Crossing Church, which is a beautiful church, Grace Crossing Church. Um, and it's a brand new church. They built it out to where the, the front part of it is like a coffee house. And I was invited this morning not only to, to play uh, his sanctuary and and witness uh, with my testimony, but also I got to play as people were coming up walking. Um, they said you could hear the saxophone a couple blocks away, and that makes me that makes me feel really good um, I, that I still have that kind of projection. But people said they were enjoying uh, hearing uh, the hymns, and I played some old time hymns. You know, they. This is a very modern church, and they're very uh, into the uh, uh, CCM, uh, the contemporary Christian music, and cutting edge uh, contemporary Christian music. But uh, you know, it was. Uh, I'm trying to see if I got another. I got another message in here. I'm looking to see. I think I was sent uh, a message through uh, Henry. So I'm going to check and see on that. And I, I did get that message. So that's that's excellent. And shared that one. I'll share that with Henry when he gives me a call back. So this is new territory for us. And it's, it's I didn't know how it was going to go. We had a couple of ideas how to pull it off. But I'm, I'm so... I'm so grateful and so thankful that I can talk about so many things. Talk about having um, so many things to be thankful in, in, uh, in a, a, a career that is uh, that I've still been lucky enough to continue to play music for a living and continue to be relevant with uh, with music, new CDs uh, coming out. This is the latest CD, uh, uh, Dot Zero Retro. 2017. Uh, it's something we're very proud of. Number 15 CD for us, and we're working on uh, another CD. And I'm working on a uh, contemporary Christian CD, as you all know, that I'm excited to get out there. And I will be making sure that they have that at uh, Grace Crossing Church. They went on Facebook Live this morning. They they broadcast on Facebook Live. You can find and, and see the whole broadcast. If you'd like to see uh, my testimony and my story that I uh, gave this morning, including uh, a little bit of uh, playing the saxophone, you can go to facebook.com forward slash Grace Crossing Church. That's Grace Crossing Church. Uh, and I, I got to find... I know I've got uh, I know I've got the the Facebook here. So I, let me let me find that for us. Let's see. I'll, I would say go to Facebook. Uh, you can also go, you can also, uh, go to www.gracecrossing.tv and that way you will be able to find, uh, all these, all the, all the, uh, testimony and, and the services. You'll fall in love with this church. It's, it's, uh, it's very, uh, modern up to date. 
I want to, before, Henry's going to call me again at 11 o'clock, and we're going to do another radio segment, and uh, I want to, I want to do a quick devotion, and, uh, you know, maybe I should wait until uh, he calls, but I think what I'll do is, is go ahead and read this one, and we'll do another one when, when the time comes. And this is from, this is from uh, Jesus Always by Sarah Young. And remember, when I, I always say this, uh, when, when I'm reading this, this is as if Jesus were speaking. Once we uh, do our next radio uh, segment, I, I'm going to try, to try to do a Facebook Live uh, feed also. I can't. I can't uh, resist trying to get something else going that that'll that'll uh, um, either work or won't, and I'll I'll figure out a way to learn from it. But this is from Jesus always. Cast your cares on me, and I will sustain you. Carrying your own burdens is wearing you out. Your shoulders were not designed for carrying heavy loads. So I want you to learn to cast your burdens on me. The first step is to recognize that something is weighing you down. Next, examine the difficulty to determine whether it's yours or someone else's. If it isn't yours, simply let go of it and leave it behind. If it is your problem, talk with me about it. I will help you see from my perspective and I'll show you the way forward. Be prepared to take action as needed, but don't let problems weigh you down by becoming your focus. Make a concerted effort to cast your cares on me, for I have strong, very strong shoulders. Then simply do the next thing in joyful dependence on me. Be encouraged by my promise to sustain you, hold you up, and provide what you need. I will supply all your needs According, my, according to my riches and glory. And that's based on Psalm 55, verse 22, Isaiah 9, verse 6, New King James Version, and Philippians 4, verse 19, and that is... Uh, New American Standard Bible. It's funny, on a on a devotion like that, uh, a devotion like that. It's it's God's timing is one of the most mysterious and miraculous elements that we simply just don't have any idea how it works. No matter how hard we try, our scientists and greatest minds and minds that have been able to tap into using parts of their brain and and show us uh, abilities that are beyond our own reasoning, we still can't figure it all out. We still can't figure out uh, where God's timing is. Anyway, the reason I bring that up is because I was having lunch today after church with Mike Grover and his lovely wife, Michelle. And we were talking about letting go and letting God. We were, we were talking about the idea of how in our addictions, we, we, tried, we tried to 
control many things and we tried to orchestrate many things and we had great expectations about how things that we had planned were going to come out and so and then we we all kind of agreed at once when we finally grasped the idea of of turning our our lives and our our will and our lives over to our our God and really meaning that we trusted him to provide to sustain as that as that devotion was talking about no matter what and to look like and to and to everything that happens in life not be the contingent as to whether we would use or whether I would take a drink no it got to the point where we said hey guess what we realize now no matter what it looks like right now number one it's going to change number two here's the best one it's gonna be okay I know that sounds that sounds kind of um, hokey but there's a lot of comfort in that if you look at it it's just going to be okay and many of the things that you think are paramount right now and I'm talking about people in recovery or people that are struggling in their spirituality or struggling with with their their relationship with um, their creator right now the things that we consider so important at this moment at this place in time this Sunday night uh, getting ready to be uh, Monday morning Monday morning in a lot of places around the world already uh, this this is it's just it's it's going to be okay things that seem so important matter so much that are life and death right now or seem to be appear to be they're just down the line where you may even forget about them think about that there's so many things that are right in front of us now and that's a good thing to live in the moment but to have the idea of letting go and letting God and saying, no matter what happens, I know God's got me. I know God's got this and it's going to be okay. That's, that's power. That's power over, over anxiety. That's power over the enemy. And he uses those things to try to derail us and to try to make us feel insecure. When we don't have to feel that way. We don't have to feel that way at all. I'm looking forward to uh, Henry uh, giving me a call. Uh, I am going to share a, uh, a devotion uh, with, with the... Uh, and then once we get... Once we get back into our, our next segment, we're that's we've already done a, a full hour of conscious conversations from Colby, Kansas. Colby, Kansas, a beautiful town. When my son was living in in when my son was living in uh, Maxville, Kansas, and I did get the chance to uh, drive by Maxville through Maxville today, and I stopped by Ma Maxville Christian Church. That's the church where uh, the song, His Sanctuary, came about. Off the Telltale CD. And that's a song you hear virtually every week uh, on Conscious Conversations. And uh, it's my pleasure to get to play it uh, for you. And I've had great response from you. But that's where the song came about. That's where my son, Pastor Jesse, lived for um, over seven years. And we always said when he was coming to Denver... When he would get to Colby, this town that I'm staying in tonight, in this beautiful hotel, is the halfway, uh, the halfway spot. Uh, so I'm going to answer this one. Hey, Henry, how's it going? 
Uh, we get. Sounds great, man. Where are we? Where are we having listeners uh, come in from tonight? Yeah, but I mean on the on the Fijit. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm interested to see who's listening in. Uh, okay. Oh, I see you 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 pulled it up there. Okay. We're well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to uh, read a quick devotion and then and then uh, we'll go from there. This is a, a devotion for uh, for Sunday, June 11th, and this is uh, one of my favorite uh, devotionals. It's called Springs in the Valley. Uh, by um, by Ms. Kalman, and it goes like this. Uh, the scripture is Psalm 57, uh, verse 8, and it's from Smith's translation. And i got to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to have to research that because I honestly don't know what that is. But this is short, and it, and it comes from Psalm 57, verse 8. You can read that in any of the translations. And it says, I will awake the dawn. And the, this is from, and the devotion is, take time. Give God time to reveal himself to you. Give yourself time to be silent and quiet before him, waiting to receive through the Spirit the assurance of his presence with you. His power working in you. Take time to read his word as in his presence, that from it you may know what he asks of you and what he promises you. Let the word create around you, create within you a holy, heavenly light in which your soul will be refreshed and strengthened for the work of daily life. And that is from Reverend Andrew Murray, and it continues on. We repeatedly come upon entries in the diary of Dr. Chalmers, which express what he called the morning grace of appropriation. Began by first waking moments, began my first waking moments with confident hold, hold upon Christ as my Savior. A day of quietness. This is another one. My faith took hold of the precious promises this morning. Here's another one. The morning makes the entire day. To think of the morning is to think of a bloom and fragrance, which, if missed, cannot be overtaken later on in the day. The Lord stands upon the shore in the morning and reveals himself to the weary disillusioned men who have toiled all night and taken nothing. He ever stands upon life's most dreary and time-worn shores. As we gaze upon him, the shadows flee, and it is morning. And that is, that is still a part of this same devotion. I'm going to continue on. There's, there's another poem here that I want to finish this off. I met God in the morning when the day was at its best, and his presence came like glory of the sunrise of the sunrise in my breast. All day long the presence lingered, all day long he stayed with me, and he sailed in perfect calmness, and we sailed in perfect calmness o'er the very troubled sea. Other ships were blown and battered, other ships were sore distressed, but the words that seemed to drive them brought us a peace and rest. Then I thought of other mornings with a keen remorse of mind, when I too had loosed the moorings with the presence left behind. And I think I know the secret. Learned, uh, learned from many a troubled way, you must seek God in the morning if you want him through the entire day. And that's by uh, a man named Ralph Cushman. 
And one last, one last tidbit on that devotion is the early morning hour has always been a time of visions. What discoveries the saints have made while others slept. Oh boy, I like that idea, the idea of the morning. I know, you, I know you're a, a morning person, Henry. Yeah, you're out like, you're out like running it at like uh, before it's light, aren't you? Oh, I see. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy because I, I, go ahead. Cool. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Wow. Oh, how about that? That's so cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's, I think, uh, I think it's gonna, I think we, we, we've gotten to a point where, you know, the young people uh, in, in our country are, are, um, are beginning to embrace soccer as, as, as a sport, you know, that's gonna, I think eventually it's gonna overtake uh, uh, the NFL. I really do. I did. I already did. Yeah, I uh, uh, I was able to. Uh, I did get that, and I appreciate you sending it um, as well. Kind of, kind of backup on, but it, it came through on on my text line, which was which was great. So I was able to uh, to to share it right away, and that's the first time I've been able to do that. Um, even when I was in the studio, I, I've been missing those because I've been trying to. I've got too many things going on <laughs> and I'm going to, when, when I, uh, when I hang up, I'm going to try to get a, a quick little Facebook live thing going, um, um, for, uh, uh, Stephen Ray Watts, uh, Facebook page and see for, until you, uh, call me with the next segment. And I figure what we'll do, um, is, is touch base again. Um, we'll, we'll touch base again, uh, say at, um, what do you think, Henry? About about twelve thirty, and then do do a ten minute, and then we'll uh, then we'll we'll do a quick uh, we'll do a quick five minute one um, somewhere after that, uh, wrapping up just a hair early. So, yeah, somewhere around in there. Yeah, we're we're still we're on Central Time, so it's a little bit later here. It's just after mid. It's it's Monday morning. Sounds great. All right, Henry. Talk to you then. So I'm gonna try to set. So here's what we're gonna try to do uh, now. It's uh, and I, I'd like to. I'm gonna try to see if. We'll, 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 we're going to try to share, um, let's see, uh, I see, well, let's see what we got here, no, that's, um,
Now we're, I think we're going to let that go because um, I don't want to. I don't want to bust the feed and do something that will cause us to, to have to, to call it a night early. So what I want to do is, if you'll be patient with me, and we're going to see um, about doing a, a quick uh, see if we can do a Facebook Live here, um, and I'm just going to we'll call it uh, we'll call it. What do you say? We'll call it live from Colby uh, tonight. Let's see, live from Colby tonight. Let's see. Okay. I gotta get this turned around. Conscious conversations, conscious conversations, live, from Colby, Kansas. Yeah, let's see what we. And we'll see if we can get some other people to uh, to uh, to text in. Let's see what we got here. We have. Yeah, we'll try that. Yeah. Well, we're live on Facebook right now, and we are live on uh, Ustream uh, for KUHSDenver.com. Uh, my name is Stephen Ray Watts, and well, welcome to my hotel room. This is uh, my hotel room in uh, Colby, Kansas. I'm uh, kind of stepping out of my comfort zone tonight. I've got the uh, the live stream that I normally have happening uh, for. Uh, conscious conversations uh, in the studio in uh, in the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. I'm normally in studio there, uh, and but we're doing something different tonight. I I, I knew we were going to be on the road. Um, I, I knew we were going to be on the road, but I but I wanted to I, I wanted to do the show anyway, and I wanted to uh, step out of my comfort zone, if you will. And we've been talking about that all night long. And wanted to do the show and see uh, see how how I could put it together. We've been talking about so many different things. We've been talking about recovery. We've been talking about um, spiritual spirituality and and um, you know discovering a relationship with your higher power um, or finding uh, finding a God of your understanding and then and then nurturing that relationship with uh, your 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 god to where you can put complete and total trust in him um, trust in that he will sustain you that uh he uh that he will provide for you and that he will protect you and you don't have to have fear. Um, you you do not have to have fear. Uh, this is a beautiful way to live, and without fear. And now it's it's like I was saying. You know, I I gave testimony this morning, and witnessed, and got to play um, music at uh, Grace Crossing Church, um, beautiful church, Grace Crossing Church uh, in Moundridge. Moundridge, Kansas, and you know it was it was one of those things where I I talked about going all in, and it's, it's funny we talked about the idea of going all in with 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 God, and it's a gambling term, so it's kind of like a, a, a supposed to be ironic, um, a, a 
that we're using a gambling term, not only with the idea of going all in with God, but all, you know, with, with recovery as well. Uh, the idea is not to be perfect. That's not what it's about. That's the namesake for the church is grace. And grace is one of the most incredible gifts, if not the most incredible gift, gift that our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, offers us. Grace. He's done the work. He's, he has made the sacrifice. The sacred blood of, the sacred blood of Jesus has given us eternal life. Now that's a done deal for all of us who just believe on his name. Just invite him into our hearts. Uh, the uh, drill sergeant of life uh, last week, uh, Beatrice Bruno, said it so eloquently. Just invite him into your heart and watch what happens. And then with that, you will find that not only are you saved, but you will open up your life and your heart and your soul and mind to a whole new way of life that will that will change that will change you and it will transform you and it will uplift you into into ways of, of living that you never thought possible. Happy, joyous, and free, we, we say in the rooms of recovery, but but also with with confidence and with uh, being able to live boldly and abundantly in in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, we've got so much that we're that we we've been talking about on conscious conversations tonight. I read two devotions, and I I want to uh, read a few more. I was going to show a couple of uh, the videos that we took of our road trip. I'll try to get I'll get to that after we do our Facebook Live. I wanted to do our Facebook Live uh, feed just to, to generate a little bit of uh, excitement on why we're out and about. And, and we're, we're here in Colby, Kansas, which is 225 miles um, to the east of Denver. We're going to be wrapping up our tour tomorrow night. Um, and this is another way, this is another reason I wanted to say this on Facebook Live, that we will be at uh, tomorrow night at uh, Prospect, uh, Prospect Soundbites Concert Series. You can find out information about that on our website, uh, which is .com. That's .com. It's Prospect, the town of Prospect, which is just south of Longmont on Highway 287. And also, it's just a little bit west of, of the highway. And I believe that concert is uh, 6 to 8 or 5 to 7, somewhere in that neighborhood. But I would like to invite everybody to come and uh, see this, this kind of this uh, finale concert for us, um, for this little tour that we've been on uh, through Kansas and then back home into our own neighborhood. We will be at... Live at Jack's uh, this this weekend on Friday night, and then we will be at uh, also in the same kind of neighborhood that n near uh, in in the northern part of Colorado in Lafayette on Saturday night. Uh, we'll be at Nisi's Bistro, which is uh, out in like I say Lafayette. You can find more information about that uh, at. Uh, .com. Also, please uh, check out uh, my website, which is stephenraywatts.com. And um, love to have you follow us, both .zero and uh, Conscious Conversations, Stephen Ray Watts, on, uh, on Facebook. We'd love to have you do that. Well, I had the opportunity to, uh, we're kind of kind of going back into... Um, the whole, that's why I was so excited about this, 
that's why I was so excited about this uh, trip. This trip was um, a trip that, for me, covered so many bases of things and places and ideas that I'm interested in following, and that is uh, working with people in the recovery community and helping people. Uh, I, I would I don't have the the ability to be an interventionist like Stephen Wilkins. Pardon me, but I do I do have the willingness and the uh, the desire to be of service in being witness, give testimony, inspiration, and talk about the twelve steps of, of recovery. One of the things that that was really cool that uh, when I went to the uh, the meeting that it was it was a recovery meeting that was in Moundridge. There was a group, and they call themselves the UIR group. And I, I think, well, I'm not sure I would be able to find that right, um, right off the bat of where that's from. Excuse me, but this is a big book study group. Um, and it also, the thing I wanted to point out was, is that with the 12 steps, and, and we have... Um, I don't know if I've, I've ever read the, the 12 steps, uh, which I don't know, there's no reason why not to, to, to read them because um, they are such an important part of, you know, of, of our whole program. But maybe what I'll do is instead, uh, is instead, this is 12 concepts based on those 12 steps. And it's based on a principle of us talking about, uh, talking about a part of the 12th step that says, practice these principles in all our affairs. Step one, acceptance. Step two, faith. Step three, trust. Step four, honesty. Step five, courage. Step six, willingness. Step seven, humility. Step eight, forgiveness. Step nine, love and hope. Step ten, patience. Step 11, perseverance. And step 12, service. These words that I read, each one of them just power packed with, with meaning and Just so much on each one that you you could you could do easily do an entire show, um, an entire show based off of each one of these words. You could do a great um, sermon series on those twelve words that are more than twelve words. They're they're just they're they're. 12 ideas and concepts that embody 12 steps, which are a, a guide for living that will 
help us overcome anything and be able to handle anything. And as I always try to put, it is always so much easier if you have your higher power there and and your trust is with is with you. One of the things I, I really liked about about this is willingness. And we have um, we have a saying in in the recovery rooms, uh, and it and it's it gets turned around. Sometimes it's like uh, it gets turned around to like it's it's here's how. So it's and how being honesty, open mindedness, and willingness. That's how. And then sometimes it's 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 here's who speaking about God, which is willingness, honesty, and open mindedness. When you when we read in the uh, spiritual experience, one of the uh, one of, one of the great sayings is it says this is part of part of a reading uh, entitled uh, spiritual experience, and I've read this before on the show, which I think is, is hugely uh, hugely pertinent. Hugely, uh, and I I think you know it, it would it would be it wouldn't hurt to read it again, but I'll get to the point at the end, and it is, uh, and I want to make sure that I'll probably finish our live feed uh, before uh, Henry calls back. So see if I can read this uh, for Facebook spiritual experience, the terms. Spiritual experience and spiritual awakening are used many times in this book, book, which upon careful reading shows that the personality change sufficient to bring about recovery from alcoholism has manifested itself among us in many different forms. Yet it is true that our first printing gave many readers the impression, impression that these personality changes or religious experiences must be in the nature of sudden and spectacular upheavals. Happily for everyone, this conclusion is erroneous. In the first few chapters, a number of sudden revolutionary changes are described, though it was not our intention to create such an impression. Many alcoholics have nevertheless concluded that in order to recover, they must acquire an immediate and overwhelming God consciousness followed at once by a vast change in feeling and outlook. Among our rapidly growing membership of thousands of alcoholics, such transformations, though frequent, are by no means the rule. Most of our experiences are what the psychologist William James calls the educational variety because they develop slowly over a period of time. Quite often, Friends of the newcomer are aware of the difference long before he himself is. He finally realizes that he has undergone a profound alteration in his reaction to life, and such a change could hardly have been brought about by himself alone. What often takes place in a few months could seldom have accomplished could se- what often takes place in a few months could seldom have been accomplished by years of self-discipline. Well, there we are. We got to get back to our, our, uh, well, there you are, Henry. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been talking, uh, the whole gamut of, of all the all the different uh, the aspects of, of this little tour, which has encompassed a lot uh, for me personally and and for the band. The, the great thing for the band is you know we touched on it a little bit before, 
uh, where it, yeah, it, it's been, it's been really cool to get invited, uh, especially invited back to, uh, you know, these, these big festivals, you know, that's, that's always uh, a good, a good sign. We, we had a particularly, uh, good trip, um, this, this time with, with, crowd enthusiasm um, at a high and uh, but I think it's because we have you know I think it's because we have such a, a chemistry um, with this uh, this particular uh, rendition of, of Dot Zero we have uh, a new bass player we've had that had been in the group for about a year now his name is Brian Gordon and uh, Brian is a uh, not only a, a dynamic um, uh, personality, but he's one of the most energetic and, and, uh, he's just a real showman, uh, on the bass, which it gives, uh, uh, you know, a dot zero, another element of, of, um, of excitement, um, on stage w with the bass guitar. And then, you know, adding, um, a female element to our group when we added Renika Cox, um, um, pretty much full time about, uh, two years ago. Uh, you know, it, it, it was, uh, it is, you know, exceeded my expectations of, of what that would, uh, you know, the, the positives that that would do for us as well. So, you know, we, we, I told, uh, the, there's a radio, uh, host in, in, uh, Wichita, his name is Steve Bauer and he does the, uh, the Sunday jazz brunch, uh, on B98, their, uh, radio station in, in Wichita, which also uh, he syndicates a show that goes down to Austin, uh, Austin, Texas, uh, on a on another Sunday jazz brunch. Uh, you know, I told him, I said, "You're going to hear, you know, the best Dot Zero band you've ever heard," and and I truly believe that. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, well, you know, and that, and I think there's, I think there's change. Um, I think there's change that are that that's going to go uh, uh, through, you know, with this genre again. I think there's, you know, you know, one of the things that uh, that I noticed, you know, that happened over uh, over the week was is you know one of the promoter of of the of the jazz in the woods. He said, you know, he came up to us before the show and he said. Don't forget to mention, make sure you mention to support live music and and not just at this show, but to support live music in general. And um, I kind of found that to be, um, no, no pun intended, a bit telltale um, in the idea of, you know, that that we're at a time or we're, we're at a time where the music industry is changing and, and live music is changing. And I think a lot of people that uh you know that grew up with you know the best of live music um you know i grew up in an era when live music was probably at its at its peak and uh and to hear you know uh also you know sandra was out at the uh uh for those of you that don't know sandra's my wife and sandra was out at the metallica concert um last wednesday when we we hit the road she went to the Metallica concert and she said that um, that they came out on stage and they mentioned support live music as well. So there's something out there about, uh, you know, the idea that we need to, uh, you know, redouble double our efforts to uh, to get live music back in, in into, uh, you know, the uh, the mainstream of of, and of our young people's uh you know, thoughts and, and minds. Yeah.
Right. Well, and you know, the funny thing about it is too, you know, it, there's, there's, there's upside and downside. I mean, I, I think uh, in, in, in the, in the vast, uh, in the big picture, there's much more upside to the idea of artists being uh, independent nowadays uh, than than being with with labels that you know you know are are not necessarily um, into developing talent anymore. They're they're into you know the almighty dollar. Um, I know my son if he hears this is gonna laugh because we. Kind of have a running joke about the almighty dollar wins again, you know. But, you know, the idea, it was funny that that same uh, radio guy, uh, Steve Bauer, was out. And he made a, a really cool comment that I, I thought was was appropriate, you know. He said, you know, make sure you, you stop by the, the CD table and, and buy, you know, a CD of, of, this, of this group. And, and when you come to the other shows... Uh, buy, buy their CDs because he says these are the modern the, the concerts now are the modern day record stores mm -hmm. That is correct. It is. It's. It, it's. It's really nice, and it's. It's. It's like I. I told uh, some people that the longevity thing has kind of crept up on us, and and at first, I. You know, I. I was kind of. It's a, I, I was saying, well, yeah, it's almost a bit embarrassing, you know, from the standpoint of saying, well, yeah, we've been around a long time, but at the and and I thought, but no, it's it's really actually, you know, a badge of honor, you know, to to have been able to keep a band together. You know how it is, Henry. I mean, you were you had um, to to keep a band together and 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 to try to remain relevant, um, and or sometimes it's it's about. Um, you know, reinventing yourself a little bit and, uh, and, you know, not, you know, not going, not being afraid to, uh, to, to, it's been kind of a theme of ours tonight on Conscious Conversations to, you know, not be afraid to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is, and it is cool. And 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 like you know, you 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 brought up a powerful point, uh, Henry. That you know, you know, no matter, you know, when you when you think about the limitations of of terrestrial radio compared to the 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 power and the relevance of the internet. I mean, you know, when when you think about. Uh, you know, the, one of the first things you, you get out here on the road and, and if the first time you, you can't hook into the Wi-Fi and you feel like you're naked, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. Right. It really is. Well, I tell you what, um, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, why don't you, um, and then, and then, uh, why don't you give me a ring in, in about, uh, 10 minutes and we'll, we'll sign off.
Yep. Okay, so I'll I'll Well, we posted our our live um I may have to edit it cuz I looked at I looked at the at the uh the photo and I got to make sure that it's not it's not goofy. Um but and so I think I'll take this opportunity and uh tr just I, I just got to give it a a, qu a quick try. Uh oh, we got something in there. Um See if we got another Yes, we've got we've got some <laughs> we've got some more feedback. So that's great. Get another message. Let's see what this message says. This is also um, see a sincere thanks for playing my. I kid you not, Steve. <laughs> I wept like a baby, giving uh, pure Thanksgiving. As I've said in the past, brother, you and Dot Cero are a huge part of my life. Blessings and Thanksgiving. Oh, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to, Perry, I'm trying to figure out, uh, I didn't get the exact name. It says, my sincere thanks for playing my, um, I hope that's, uh, I think I know what that, that means is, is a song that, uh, that you like. And uh, that's great. So what I'm going to do here, and Perry, thank you for your participation tonight. And thank everybody. I was going to say anybody can text me at, at this number. Uh, we still have a few. Uh, we still have a few minutes left in conscious conversations tonight. We're going to sign off um, just a little bit early and hit the hay. Get ready for this show tomorrow. 720-663-8848. But I want to thank. Um, my brother in Christ, uh, Perry Brugget, for his uh, participation tonight in uh, Conscious Conversations. I, it's the first time I've been able to uh, respond back to him properly. And go figure, it's when I'm in uh, Colby, Kansas. Tonight, uh, Henry is in studio. Henry Archuleta, our uh, owner and leader at uh, KUHSDenver.com. He's... Uh, He's a man that is just uh, on the cutting edge of all that's new in, in radio and streaming and giving us the opportunity to reach people virtually all over the globe and bring the good news of Jesus Christ and our, our Lord and Savior and, and uh, our Heavenly Father and also to bring music, uh, music to the, the whole world. And the idea, uh, especially with with me, recovery as well. This is a show where I can I get to uh, spend a lot of time talking about uh, things that are very important to me, and those three aspects are incredibly important uh, to me. You can bring everything down to the lowest common denominator, and that lowest common denominator is love. And if you were to describe what love is, it's just one word, maybe two, Jesus, Jesus Christ. That's who is love. He teaches us how to love. When he gave us his Holy Spirit to live inside of us, and teach us how to have the right desires to live in a godly way, in a way that will glorify His name and our Heavenly Father. So I'm going to try to show you this. I had I had one before we sign off because I had. Uh, well, let's see. I had one video that I was going to see if I could um, make some sense out of, and uh, 
play for you that uh, it's a good one. So we're going to find it here. This is when we were getting ready to take off. That's the first day of of us being on the road, and then uh, see if I can uh, let's see. There was another good one, I think. Oh, it's this. I think it's this one. Here's one. And that's that's one of the that's one of the ones that turned out good. We'll see. I don't think I don't know if I have any more. I, I uh, there might be another one. Um, I'm trying to think. Here's getting set up uh, just at, right at Jazz in the Woods.
Well, Henry. Well, Henry. I think it's about time we uh, we sign off on this uh, on this special edition of Conscious Conversations. I I really want to thank you and and uh, um, I appreciate you so much uh, letting us uh, do this show and, and coming in late to the studio uh, when when you're normally sawing sawing logs, Henry. I know, yeah, you're, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> you're one of those guys. Well, I certainly appreciate it. It's been fun because it, 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 it has uh, been uh, fun to do something different and, and just give people a different flavor of, of, of what, what's going on and what we've been doing. And uh, so I appreciate it very, very much. And uh, on behalf of Yep. Excellent. Sounds great. I had um, one of my uh, friends uh, uh, came, uh, texted in, and, and thanks, uh, thanked me for playing uh, uh, his favorite song. And so I, I, I had to tell him that no, it was you that played it. <laughs> but that was it, But you, you hit the nail on the head on that one. Um, and for all of our listeners uh, on. Uh, KUHSDenver.com uh, and Conscious Conversations on behalf of uh, our uh, leader and uh, fearless leader and, and uh, owner, uh, Henry Archuleta. My name is Stephen Ray Watts, and I thank you all for uh, listening. I'll be back in Denver tomorrow. Don't forget to uh, uh, come on out to uh, the uh, Prospect Sound Bites concert tomorrow night at, uh, in Prospect, just south of Longmont, on a Monday night concert series. Would love to see everybody out there. Thank you, Henry. I had a great time as always. Next week, uh, just just so you know, next week I have another um, wonderful counselor, uh, uh, Crystal, uh, coming in from Harmony uh, Recovery Center, and we're going to be talking uh, recovery in studio next week on Father's Day, a special Father's Day edition of of um, Conscious Conversations. A lot to talk about uh, with recovery and uh, and also dedications to fathers everywhere. So it's going to be a great show. Good night. Thanks, Henry. Okay, well, it's time for us to say good night. Uh, it's been a, a great night. I've gotten to do just about everything. I was hoping I'd get to do uh, some better than others. Uh, always the devotions and talk about um, Jesus and God are, are above, uh, above everything and sharing about recovery, which I give, uh, I give all my thanks. Uh, to to the Lord for for my sobriety and I'm so grateful for this new life that I get to live uh, for for conscious conversations and uh, all of our listeners everywhere I thank you uh, for the input and uh, and I'll say good night and God bless.
We'll see you next week on Conscious Conversations.